Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about uh, some of the basic vector skills in uh, in Fireworks. So I've got Fireworks up and running and I'm just going to open up a new canvas and since we're just going to be playing on this canvas the size doesn't matter too much so 500 by 500 is okay. Put that on and now I'm zoomed out a little bit. Uh, Fireworks decided to make it 67 percent. I'm just going to bring it up to 100 percent just so it's a little more accurate there. Okay, so uh, in the previous tutorials we've talked about editing photos and some of the other tools in this toolbar down the left side in Fireworks. Um, now I want to talk about the vector tools. So when you think vector tools, um, you think they are the tools used to create stuff yourself. When, so when you want to make a shape or draw or put in text or you need a vertical line or a straight line or a curved line, or a star or an arrow or anything that you're going to create then you're going to come over and use these vector tools um, and you can see there's just a section here it looks like there's just six tools but there's actually a lot more in there um, let's start out with just one of the shape tools so um, you'll see that there's a shape there and it's got a little triangle in the lower left or lower right corner if I click and hold on that I'll see the whole list of um, shapes that I can use so I'm just going to pick up the rectangle tool first and when I pick that up, you can see my cursor uh, changed into that crosshair. And if I click and drag, I can drag out a rectangle. Now, as soon as that rectangle is drawn out, um, I still have the rectangle tool, so I could keep drawing rectangles. But most likely, I'm going to want to put the rectangle tool down. So I need to go back over and go to that pointer tool. And you can see when I, when I roll the, my mouse over that pointer tool, it pops open a little tool tip there. It tells me what that tool is and also tells me the keyboard shortcut. And this is sort of a handy one that if you just press the letter V as in Victor any time, you will it will go back and get your default selection tool. So I've got my tool back. Let me get rid of those. All right, so I've drawn this vector object out on the canvas, and it just so happens that it's a rectangle. And uh, let's just use it to look at some of the properties here of, of vectors. Um, so when I click on that rectangle with that black selection tool, uh, it becomes selected. And I can tell it's selected because it gets um, these nice little uh, handles around it. Let me just close this stuff. Um, and also, what I want to do, I just wanted to open this up. Uh, and I get the little blue handles, okay? And also I can see over in the layer panel that it's highlighted over here. So that just means that that object is selected. And when it's selected, the property bar down along the bottom uh, changes and shows me all the properties of that object. So as I look there, this property bar is divided into four sections. So the first section is the size, so there's the width and the height in pixels, and the XY coordinates of the upper left hand corner. So if I knew, if I had a specific size of rectangle that I needed, like, oh, I need a rectangle that's 150 pixels wide, I can just type it in there, uh, hit enter on my keyboard, and it resizes it. Okay, same thing. Let's say, oh, well, I really wanted a square, so instead of redrawing it or grabbing it and trying to stretch it, I can just come down and, and type in 150 by 150. Same thing with the XY coordinates. If I knew the exact position where I wanted a type for this to be located, I could just type it in. Okay, for instance. Okay. So, but that's what that area is for down there, the width and the height and the position. All right, so now that we have uh, it the right size, let's look at the properties first, um, what the options are for the fill or the inside color here. And you can see that's the next section here on my properties bar, um, the little paint bucket, which is the fill properties. So that first thing there, there's a little color well or color picker. So once if my rectangle is selected and I click on that color picker you can see that I get the, the sort of the standard uh, palette that comes up and lets me select colors. If I like one of those colors great if it's not quite right I can come over in that same palette you'll see there's a little uh, color wheel icon there and when I click on that I get a, uh, an, a way to adjust the, the color so I can adjust through here to lighten it up and use this tool as well. So it gives me a lot more options here on how to pick the color. Okay, so that's if I want a solid color. So let's see what the other options are. 
Okay, so I pick the color. You can see in this menu it says that it, the default is solid. If I open that up, you'll see there's some other options here. So let's go right to gradient. So if I want a gradient in here in the fill, um, you can see there's a bunch of pre-made gradients that you can ro as you roll over them, they they kind of give you a sample. So let's just go to linear, so we can get an idea of how this works. So I pick linear gradient, which just means going in a straight line from one color to another color. And you can see the color that I had selected down here was that blue color, and it's now fading, or there's a gradient into a looks like a gray color or a white color. And then I get this little toolbar. So first thing I need to know is how to change those colors. Maybe I don't want them um, those two colors. Okay, so now that I have linear is the type of fill, uh, there's a I can go back to that color well, and when I click on that, I don't get the same palette coming up. Um, I get my little gradient controller, and uh, down here along the bottom, next to the color wheel, are the two little color samples that are determining the gradient. So if I really wanted it's the fade from this blue color over here into say black maybe. I've got to click on this one that I want to change. When I click on it, the palette comes up, and I can change the color. Okay, so now it's changing from from blue to black. I say, well, I really wanted it to change from black to grit to white, so I can select this one and change that one to white. So pretty easy to change the color of the gradients here. Uh, I'm going to click back off of that. Um, now, once now that I know how to change the gradient, maybe I need to adjust what the gradient's doing inside of inside of this object and I'm going to do that with these little handles. Okay, So the square one lets me adjust how much uh, sort of the, the, the one color of the gradient. So I can drag that back and forth um, and anything you know in this case below the rectangle becomes all that one color. So all white but if it was a different color here if I was having this fade into red then that part becomes fully red not any black in there. Same thing with the circle. When I drag that down, if I can grab onto it, everything above that becomes all of that color, and the gradient is only happening in between these two handles. So um, they kind of move together. The, the square lets me actually extend the gradient if I want the gradient to change over a longer period of time. OK, it, what if I want the gradient going left horizontal instead of vertical? All I need to do is move this over, so that's where the gradient ends, and the square handle rotates. So if I just watch carefully that line, now I have a gradient that is going uh, horizontal instead of vertical. So pretty easy to change the gradient there. All right, next, I'm going to go back in here and take go back to the solid color. Uh, the other thing that I can do here uh, after gradient is pattern. So these patterns are a type of fill. It's almost like putting a photograph inside instead of a color. Um, so there's a whole selection here. So for instance, let's say I click on leaves, and you can see it. It's almost like putting a photo of leaves in there. Um, and there's some handles here to adjust the leaves if you want to as well. Okay, and you can see there's a whole bunch of options there under patterns. Uh, if you want to put one of your own pictures in as the fill, if you go all the way to the bottom, and there's a place that for other, and there under other is uh, you can it'll take you out and you can browse for your own photo to put in there. Okay, so that's the pattern. Okay, one more thing here um, is this texture idea. So I'm back to solid, and I've got this other main category called texture here. So if I want it to be blue, but I want there to be a texture in there, um, I can come down and there's a whole selection of textures. And as I roll over, I get a little preview um, coming up. So say if I wanted some horizontal lines, and they go in. Um, so now I've got that horizontal line texture. And there's a percentage here that lets me control how strong that texture is. So if I go all the way up to 100, that'll be a much stronger texture. And obviously, if I go down to a low percentage, that texture will be much more subtle. Now if I just decide I don't want any texture, um, you may notice on this list of all these textures, there's no place that says none. All I need to do is just take whatever texture is in there and take it to zero. Okay, and that's the way to get the texture out. <clears throat> okay, so that's a quick overview of that section of the fill. Let's go on to the next section here where the pencil is. So that pencil is the stroke, and the stroke is uh, the border. 
All right, you can see that I've got a red line through my color uh, well or my color picker. That just means there's no stroke on now. So if I click on that and select a stroke, okay, you can see I got a little thin black stroke on. So it defaults to a one pixel wide stroke and the category that that is in is just a one pixel um, soft line okay, that goes in our guy. So I can choose, uh, easily, it's easy to change. So if I wanted a thicker border, just drag that up. Now I have a thicker border. And if I want to change the kind of instrument that made that border, you can see all these options here. So if I wanted to look like a highlighter or maybe um, a thin marker made that, you can see there's different types of tools that go on there. So I'm just going to go back to pencil and one pixel soft. Um, that's the default actually. Um, and then the other controls that are underneath here, so edge is basically, let me just get a different tool here um, and make it thicker. So edge is basically how hard you push with that whatever tool. So if I take this down to one, you can see uh, it means I pushed really hard with say this basic brush. If I take it up to a hundred, it means I was wasn't pushing very lightly when I was making the stroke. Um, so if you need that kind of control, there you, we do have that ability to do that here. So I'm going to go back here to my pencil. Alright, so back to the basic here, one pixel soft. Um, also, I'm not going to demonstrate it, but you can see under texture here, just like the texture of the fill, if you have a thick border, you can tell it that you want to have texture in it, um, and it works just like the texture for the fill. All right, the one other thing here that is important is I've drawn a rectangle here on the canvas. If I want it to have rounded corners, that control is also underneath the um, this um, border or the stroke category. You can see right there, roundness, and it's in pixels. So if I just drag that up, say to 20, so it's a radius of 20, you can see that I now have rounded corners on that rectangle. And we'll use that uh, later. Um, that is actually a nice capability there. Okay, so that gives me uh, those two sections. Those are probably the two most important ones, the fill and the stroke for these vector objects. Now the one, the one last section over here, this is kind of special effects. Um, so where it says 100 there, that's actually the opacity. So the default that it's 100% opaque. If you do want to make it transparent, this object, you can lower the opacity and you can kind of see how that faded out it actually became transparent so if I did have another shape um, that wasn't transparent and um, I put that other shape underneath you can see that it's transparent the one this this one on top is transparent okay so it gives me the ability to uh, change the opacity all right so uh, one last thing here on this on this toolbar uh, under filters here, this is where all the special effects like bevels and drop shadows and embosses and frames and all that kind of stuff is. So when I'm done with this tutorial, you might take a few minutes, draw yourself out just a vector shape, and and take go through and play with these tools. Um, and so under filters, here how it works. Here, here's how it works. Um, so you can see some of the options here. So I can, if I wanted a bevel, I could select bevels and let's say inner bevel. And you can kind of see it puts a it puts a bevel on my object, and then I've got a little um, dialog box open that helps me gives me some options for what that bevel looks like. First, the shape of the bevel, so it defaults to flat. But you can see there's a bunch of other shapes here that I could play with. Maybe I want to see what smooth looks like. All right, you can see what happens. I can also control um, how thick that bevel is. So if I just want a little micro bevel, I can take that thickness down and I get a much smaller effect there. Okay, and then a few other settings here that you could play with. All right, now if I click off, uh, that little dialog box goes away, but I can see under filters there it's showing me, hey, you've applied the inner, be an inner bevel filter to this, to this vector object. Um, if I need to edit that effect some more or that filter, I click on this little blue uh, button with the eye in it that brings up that dialog box again and I can adjust it some more. If I decide I just want this gone, I can select inner bevel and push the minus and that removes the filter. Uh, and that's kind of how the rest of these work. So let's say if I wanted a drop shadow on this. okay, So I just select drop shadow. I get a little control here that lets me control the drop shadow. 
I'll just leave the default for a second. And you can see now I have a drop shadow out there on the on this object. On the, it basically puts a shadow on the right and the bottom edges. And I can say, well, I want to adjust that a little bit. Maybe I want this to look like it, this object's higher off the canvas. Okay, you can adjust that. And if I decide I just want it gone, I click the minus and off it goes. So um, those are the four main sections of the property toolbar. And pretty much all the vector objects that we draw over here have that set of properties. Okay, it, Obviously, if I draw a straight line with this line tool, it's not going to have fill properties Okay, because it's not a shape. But the rest of the properties are here. Okay, So all these other properties would function pretty much just the same. Okay, So that gets us started with vector objects. So take a few minutes um, and uh, draw out one of these objects and sort of go through that properties bar and make sure you have a good handle on how that is meant to work.